and discovered in year 2008 through a yearly pesmid test. Prior to that, there's no signs and symptoms. I was kind of very upset and I kind of like, you know, why is it me? And, and I don't know how, how to handle it at that, that, that time. In terms of incidence, there is a declining trend in the incidence of cervical cancer. Now cervical cancer is number 10, commonest cancer, according to the latest Cancer Registry of Singapore. I think the reason why it is declining in incidence is because more women are aware and they are coming forward for pap smear screening. So the most common symptom that uh, most patients encounter will be bleeding after sex. However, some women would also complain of other symptoms such as irregular menstrual bleeding or a prolonged menstrual bleeding. Right? And in certain cases, patients may also complain of abnormal vaginal discharge. Bleeding in between menses. For older women, they may present with bleeding after menopause. So these are some of the common signs of cervical cancer. Now, pap smear screening is very long established as an effective screening tool for cervical cancer. And all women, once they're sexually active, should go for pap smear screening. It is recommended to start from age 25 onwards to age 69 to screen for pap smear once every three years at the minimum. If possible, some women may opt to screen for it yearly. Now, because we know the cause of cervical cancer is due to a virus, scientists have developed a vaccine. This vaccine is very effective. The effectiveness is in the region of 80 to perhaps 90%. And it's recommended for young girls from age 9 to 26 years old. Now, the vaccine, there are two forms. One is a vaccine that covers four strains of the virus. Now, the four strains include two strains that cover cervical cancer and two strain that causes genital warts, which is an STD. The other type of vaccine is a pure cancer vaccine and it only covers the two strains that cause cervical cancer. We can detect cervical cancer in its pre-cancer stage. Now we know that cervical cancer is, besides being caused by the virus, it also has got a long pre-cancer stage, which means that the cells start to become abnormal before they become truly cancerous. Now this abnormal stage is easily picked up by pap smear screening. And if you can detect these pre-cancer cells, there are effective ways to treat them by just burning them away without having resorting to removing the womb. So I always tell women, early treatment not only saves your lives, but also saves your womb. We were trying to provide emotional support for my mom and also like accompany her on all her visits to make sure that we didn't miss out any information with regards to like what this illness was and like you know how it would affect her. Um, and I think we were trying to just be like her rock in this kind of like difficult time for her because it was very emotionally taxing for her. Last time I used to take things very, you know, very anxious to finish certain things and kind of thing. Um, now I'm kind of like, you know, slow down my pace and uh, also those things around me, I, I appreciate more. Our family's always been very close, so it's not like we had to pull through adversity to become closer. But I think we're just more appreciative of each day. And because also, like what my mom says, we know that there's no definite, you know, you never know what happens tomorrow. So we try to cherish every day that we have together. Go for your yearly pap test, because uh, through this uh, pap test, I found out about my illness and um, it, it saved my life. I would advise that um, you go for vaccination to prevent the cancer. And for women who are, are sexually active above the age of 25, I would advise them to go for regular pap smear screening to prevent cervical cancer. Because cervical cancer is really a preventable disease and highly curable if discovered at early stages. First of all, you know, women, please take charge. For cancer in which there's screening test, please go forward for screening. If you are screen positive, please do not be scared. Go and seek medical advice. Often this can be treated because they are always early. If you are diagnosed with cancer, please do not give up hope. Now, cancer is no longer a death sentence. There are lots of advances in the field of treatment of cancer, be it surgery, drugs, chemotherapy. There is hope, you know. And the main thing for them is that they must stay positive. Think about their loved ones, their children, their mothers, you know or for themselves and fight on and live on. Hi, I'm May. This is my daughter, Wen Ning. 
I'm a survivor of cervical cancer.